his love. Let's all stand. Number 629, love lifted me. 629 in your hymn book. Let's lift up our voices on that verse. Praise the Lord for the saving grace of Jesus Christ and love, the love of God did lift us and we thank Him for that. You may be seated. It's a joy to see each and every one of you and we've got a lot of things happening not only today at the end of the service. We have a baptism and we're looking forward to that. We've got our afterwards, Brother Daniel will say a little bit more about it, but our meet and greet for the 70s, uh, 70s and above, and we'll have a great time over there. I just came from a wonderful uh, class uh, brought together of a couple different Sunday school classes and uh, what, with some of the couples of our church, and we've had a wonderful day thus far. But as we go to prayer, I want to remind you of these couple of things, and I'd like to invite you back tonight. A friend of mine, John White, will be, he pastors over in Rural Hall, North Carolina. He and his wife will be coming tonight. Here's how the, the service will play out. We'll come right here at 630, and then we'll have the beginning of the service. The choir will sing, and we'll have uh, a couple songs. And then the ladies will break out and go down to the chapel. And then we'll have breakout sessions for the uh, teens and then also the children of the church. So the uh, sixth grade and above will go downstairs, Brother Kyle, Miss Anna. And then uh, all the kids, first grade through fifth grade, my family and I will be upstairs with them in Ridge Kids. And we'll have a great time with all the first through fifth graders. So maybe you don't normally come on Sunday nights, but if you can adjust your schedule, maybe make some things happen, we would certainly love to have you come back. And uh, Brother John, will, um, John White will speak to the men in here and then his wife 
life to the ladies and then those breakout sessions as well for the young people and the kids. And so we'll have a great time tonight and I invite you back at 6.30 and I'd love to get to be a part of all of that. And then this Wednesday... All of us know Brother John Stevens. Most of you know Brother John Stevens. He was the interim pastor here before I came. And he's going to be coming through, and he's going to stay over and be with us on Wednesday evening. And so I'd like for you to come back and greet him and see him. Maybe it's been a while since, I know it's been a while since he's been through, but uh, he'll be here with us on Wednesday evening, and I hope that you're able to make it back for that evening service. He and Marilyn will be our guests that evening. We'll have a great, great time together. And then next week, Dr. David Gibbs who I mentioned before, is a tremendous speaker. I, I hope that you'll be here, and I hope that you'll invite somebody to come, and uh, it will be a great blessing to them, whoever you bring, to hear Brother, uh, Brother Gibbs, and it'll be a great time. Well, we're going to go to Lord in prayer, ask Him to bless our service. While we do that, you know, Brother Larry Russell had uh, heart catheterization this past week. That went fine, but it showed some things need to be done, so he's got a follow-up appointment now this week, and so they're going to have to do some, uh, some surgery, so I want you to be praying for Brother Larry Russell, and uh, also continue to pray for Miss Debbie Mullins. Brother Steve Mullins is one of our deacons, and his wife uh, on, uh, on that battle of cancer, and so we want you to pray for the Lord's blessings and grace in that family. And then uh, be prayer for Brother Butch Long. This is Brother Dan's uh, father-in-law, and Miss Carmen is up there uh, helping with him. And so I want you to really, he's just got a, a lot of issues going on physically, and we certainly, he's a faithful uh, man. He's uh, helped start the church that Brother Dan and I both worked at years ago. And uh, so I want you to pray for Butch Long. Speaking of uh, Debbie Mullins, I had this note to the church family. Uh, Dear church family, knowing that I could not get around to everyone, I decided to write to all of you. My heart has been overwhelmed with all the love that's been sent to us with your prayers, uh, precious words, and, and uh, as they're such an encouragement not only to me but to our whole family. God is so strengthening, is strengthening us day by day with his great presence being known. I want you to know as we read and reread my cards, I'm um, seeing your sweet smiles of love and concern as my expectation is in him, the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm knowing the power in your prayers, helping me to rest in him each day. God's plan is perfect, and our heart's desire is to praise and honor him, Steve, Debbie, and the family. And so why don't you keep on praying for Miss Debbie and that family, of course. But as we go to church, prayer. It's a wonderful, wonderful, isn't this a great, uh, good to see people here? As a pastor, I tell you, I'm thinking back to when we were, had COVID, and I was just preaching at empty pew after empty pew after empty pew, Marty Scroggs, empty pew, because Marty would come sometimes. <laughs> and then, boy, oh boy, you think this crowd looks intimidating. You should just look out and see Marty only. Mm. But, uh, but it's wonderful to see each and every one of you here today, and so just forgive me for taking a moment to take it all in. We've been in California, and we're certainly back, glad to get back home and be back over here, and so uh, it's just been a joy to see you here. And uh, so I see Hannah back there, Hannah and Preston, soon to be Preston and Hannah Quillen, I guess, will be married next Saturday, and they're glad to be here. His last day as a free man, last Sunday as a free man, and uh, I tried to give him a hard time out there, and he was in a daze. I don't even think he knew what I was talking about, but uh, so it's a joy to be in church, and I hope that before you leave that you'll talk to some people who you haven't seen yet, you haven't got to talk to, because this is a wonderful, wonderful plan that God has put together for the church to meet and to encourage one another, and I hope that when you leave, that was what you'll feel. Father, bless us now. Forgive my ramblings, dear Lord, but I thank you for this crowd, and it's a joy just to be in church. It's a joy to have the ability to be here, dear Lord. I'm looking at people. They went to great efforts just to be here, and Lord, we weep to some degree because of the difficulty they had in getting here, but I don't think they would have me do that, dear Lord. They would just rejoice that they could gather together. Oh, dear Lord, I pray that you would touch this service with your presence. And Lord, I pray that you would use it. I pray that you'd use every aspect of it. May we honor and glorify you in Jesus' name. We'll thank you for these things. Amen.
Well, as Pastor said, we're very glad for everybody that's here this morning. But if you're a guest with us this morning, we're doubly glad that you've decided to join with us at Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church this morning. Hopefully, when you came in, you received a uh, bulletin. And part of that bulletin that you would have received as you came through the door has a guest card in it. And if you wouldn't mind to take that card as, as a guest and fill it out and drop it off at our guest services counter, which is off to the left as you leave today, and there'll be somebody there to give you a gift. And thank you for being a guest with us this, uh, this morning. We're so glad uh, to have you here. And uh, then just a couple things to be aware of as, uh, as events come and go. Pastor's mentioned already, but uh, we have our meet and greet for those who are in their 70s or over after the service tonight. So if that is you and you came ready for that or you didn't, uh, then we would invite you to stay after the service uh, today and make your way across the parking lot or down the hall and over into the Family Life Center. And we have it all set and ready to go. And we're looking forward to having that, uh, that final meet and greet. And uh, we've thoroughly enjoyed these. So thank you for all who have come to them, who have worked to make them possible. And, uh, and it's going to be a great time after the service today if you can stay over for that. And like I said, even if you weren't planning to, and you can, uh, then I'd invite you to do just that. And then just a couple other things that you want to know that are going to be uh, happening, and there'll be some things we'll say at the end of the service just so uh, you're aware of them, but we are looking forward to our community harvest party, and uh, that's something we've done the last several years, and we're able to reach out into the community, invite a lot of people to come, and a big part of this is just to get uh, the name of Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church out into the community, and we want everybody to know that it's happening so they can come, they can enjoy their time here, we'll put some information and things in their hands, and and that way they can be introduced to a church that uh, can love on their family and can help, can help uh, their family grow spiritually to be saved if they're not already. And there's some ways that you can get involved in that. But today inside your bulletin, uh, you should receive a, uh, a card. This is an orange card. It looks like this. And uh, you can fill that card out if you'd be interested in helping with different things the day of and different things to that nature. And I believe the table out in the, there's a table out in the lobby for you to drop those off and, and get any questions answered that you might have. And then uh, the bulletin also gives some information as regards to dropping off uh, donating candy. If you'd like to donate candy, we'll use that a lot to uh, give out as prizes and different things that day on October the 22nd. So it's a, it's a big event. Uh, we need your help to get some things ready for that. So if you wouldn't mind to uh, fill that out, if you'd be interested in serving, uh, drop that off even today as you leave, that'd be very helpful. And and, uh, some different things that go along with that. There's other things in the bulletins, other uh, a bulletin, other events and things coming up. Uh, Brett Pastor mentioned Dr. Gibbs here next week and things as well. Uh, you can stay uh, aware of those things by glancing through that. But those are all the announcements we need to make this morning. So let's all stand together this morning as we continue to sing song 195, The Wonder of It All.
Cross of Calvary. I'm glad, so glad that I've been born again. Born again and all because of Calvary. I'm glad, so glad that I've been born again. Amen, amen. I'm glad to be born again and thank the Lord for his saving grace. And I trust that in this day and age when it's not always seen in a popular fashion to be a believer in Jesus Christ, may we be proud, not proud in an arrogant way, but may we be not ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ that, um, that saved us. And I, oftentimes I think when, when I have not spoke up for the Lord, I don't believe it was ashamed of Him. I just think about worry about your image or something like that. But let's just in so many ways throw that governor off and just not be ashamed, not be hesitant to speak up for the Lord. Sometimes you can't give a full gospel presentation. You can't sit them down and give them a three-point sermon. Maybe you wouldn't if you could. And you may not be able to go through all of it, but you can at least put a word in for the Lord. And talking about how good God has been to you, how, how He's answered prayer, how He's getting you through. Just a word is what a wonderful time to, what a wonderful way to give glory to the Lord. Thankful for His saving grace. Well, I want you to look, if you would, in Luke chapter 17. I want to preach for a little while about faith to forgive. Luke chapter 17, while you're finding your place in Luke 17, I did hear this story about this redneck fellow. He was sitting next to Einstein back in the day, and they were traveling a train somewhere. And Einstein said to the redneck, said, well, it's a long train ride. He said, uh, why don't we play a little game? And Einstein said, I'll ask you a question. If you can't answer it, you give me $5. He said, then I'll turn around, you ask me a question. If I can't answer the question you give me, I'll give you $500. The redneck said, well, I ain't no mathematician, but I believe I can work that one out. And so he said, okay, we'll do it. So, Einstein asked him, how far is it from the earth to the moon? The redneck thought about all the times he'd looked out the moon. He thought, well, I don't know. He said, about far as I've ever been from my house, about 25 miles. He said, it's got to be more than that. But he said, I don't rightly know. And so he gave Einstein $5. He said, all right, now it's your turn. The redneck asked, okay, what goes up a hill with three legs and comes down with four? Einstein went through every mathematic equation that he could think of. He went through every thought process that he could even come up with. And he said, I, I, I don't know. So he reached in and gave that redneck $500. And he said, here you go. I'm a man of my word. And he said, all right. He says back to Einstein Stern. He said, but before I ask my question, he says, what does go up a hill with three legs and come back down with five? And the redneck says, beats me. Here's $5. <laughs> so... <clears throat> All rednecks aren't dumb, you know, I mean, listen, listen, they're not all dumb, so. I want you to look at chapter 17 of Luke, but verses 3 through 6, 3 through 6 of Luke 17. Jesus is teaching on offenses, of which all of us have some. We've all been offended. He says in verse number 3, take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, meaning just confront him, go to him, tell him, this is what <clears throat> I saw you do. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day, turn again to thee, saying, I repent, and thou shalt forgive him. And the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine tree, now we're thinking, you say, say unto this mountain, uh, be removed. And that's another passage, another story that Jesus uh, is talking to some disciples. But this one, if you had faith, this grain of mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. I'm coming today f with some help for one of Satan's most crippling attacks to us Christians. And you say, you hear me say that, you say, wow, we must be talking about, about bad health, loss of a loved one, or poverty, or lack of opportunity. And I believe I'm going to speak to you about something that is a help more than all of those areas. Because I believe that withholding forgiveness is hurting Christians more than almost anything else in our Christian lives. Be it some spouse that's 
done you wrong, and even though you're still together, you still haven't granted biblical forgiveness. Maybe it's somebody that, God forbid, has even mistreated you or abused you in the past, and their physical presence is long gone from you, but that effect never has left. I read a story of a true story about missionaries that were in, the, in New Guinea years ago, and they were one Sunday on Lord's Day, they were giving Lord's Supper. And one of the converts of this particular missionary and the missionary were sitting there together, and the missionary could see that the convert was, the new Christian was wincing, and he could tell something was wrong. And he asked, what, what's bothering you? He whispered to him. And the, the New Guinea person, the tribal person that had been reached for the gospel in recent days said, the man who just came in killed my father, and now he's come to remember the Lord with us. He said, I didn't know if I could take it. He said, but it's all right. And this next phrase, he said, really humbled the missionary. He said, we're all washed in the same precious blood. And they had the Lord's Supper together, that gathering. Someone who had taken his father's life had been reached with the gospel after that. And I asked myself this question as I was reading that, could I have done that? Well, we know the truth of the forgiveness of Jesus Christ, and we know the fact that uh, his sins are, took as much of the blood of Christ as my sins and everybody else's sins, and we understand all that, but could I have done that? I don't know what the answer is, but we see in our passage that Jesus is teaching on offenses, and I want to go through here and just bring a couple points out and see what the immediate response of the disciples were at the end. But first of all, I'm going to show you in verse number three the truth of the offense. He said, take heed to yourself if thy brother trespass against thee, and you might as well have said, since your brother's going to trespass against you. So I see the truth of the offense at first. Mark it down. People will trespass against you. They will do things that you don't like, and they will not all be outsiders. They will not all be people that haven't come to faith in Christ. They will not all be those people. It'll be some of the ones in here, and people will offend us. And I was thinking about this as I was preparing. I know what we think, and sometimes we think, well, I know I get offended, but I get over it quick. But we take that to mean that, well, when somebody took my parking space at Food City, oh, that made me mad. But I'm a Christian. I'm going to let him go. Lord Jesus, help me. Or they take that last item that's on sale the, back in the day when there was Kmart and they had blue light specials and there was one item left on that shelf. And boy, that, that woman, she came over and got it right in front of you, ma'am. And you thought, oh, I'd like to show her a thing or two. But you said, no, I'm too good a Christian. I won't let that bother me. We think, I don't let offenses bother me. Well, those are the light diet stuff. Because the Scripture says here, when Jesus said, if your brother offend thee, you ought to forgive him. And those things that I just mentioned, as funny as they might be, they're not the big ones. But all of us have been offended, and if we haven't been offended yet, we will be offended. We will have things that come against us, whether we get offended or not, I guess, is, is to be determined. But we have things that will be against us. But think about this. It stands to reason we will have things against us because we live in a sin-cursed world. We live with and around, and we are, by the way, we live with and around imperfect people. And Satan is the prince and power of the air out there. He's got a lot of things going so, of course, we're going to have offenses that come at us. We're not always going to catch our spouse or our family members or our coworkers or our church, fellow church members. We're not always going to catch them on the good day. We're going to catch them on the day that they really let us have it. I see the truth of the, events, of the offense in verse number 3, but we might as well go ahead and unload the whole truck on verse number 4. We see the abundance of them. Jesus said, yeah, you're not only going to be offended the once, but he said if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day, turn again to say, I repent. Sounds a lot like what Peter, when, Jesus, when he asked Jesus, he said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? 
I'd be a super duper Christian if I did seven times. Wouldn't I, Lord? Seven, we, it's amazing how we spiritualize things. Seven's the number of perfection. That's, the, all, that's what, and Peter, I imagine, he said, well, Lord, I know if I did it seven times, that'd be amazing. You'd pat me on the back and say, you're the best little Christian I know. Would that be enough, Lord? And Jesus answered back and said, no, but 70 times seven will be a good start. About every commentator you know mentions those that, I know what some of you are thinking, okay, he's on 489. Uh, next time he lets me have it, that's 490, and he's got it. That's an infinite time. And so we see not only the truth of the offense, but the abundance of them. So I'm saying to you, you might as well get ready that coming up tomorrow and next day and next day and next, there's going to be people that they don't care about your feelings. They don't care about how you receive things. They don't care about how you're taking things, how your life is going. They don't care about any of those things. They're just offensive. Researchers have defined the emotion of offense, if you want to know what it is. It's a feeling that's triggered by a blow to a person's honor. Because really what an offense is, they should have treated me better than that. They should have known who I was. They should have been more kind. They should have treated me in a way that was deserving of my position, whatever it is. But Jesus says, not only will you get offended, you're going to get offended again and again and again. Some of us are so sensitive that somebody can't say one thing to us without us taking offense. I mentioned I spoke to the, uh, some combined Sunday school classes just a little bit ago, and I told them that sometimes we've got a chip on our shoulder. We're just ready for somebody to give us some bad vibe or some bad word. Just look at me wrong. So, well, I didn't mean that. Well, I think you did. And just looking at us wrong. I'm saying that there's people who are going to offend us that's going to go over and over and over again. There's not going to be offenses. There's going to be abundance of offense. But I want to give you the last one, point number five, because I want to spend my time there. I want you to see the need for the offended. Because Jesus gives this word to his disciples. He, he says to them, if somebody offends you, forgive them. If they offend you a lot of times, forgive them. And now I want you to look in verse number 5 and see what the disciples' response when Jesus said what he just said. In verses 1, 2, 3, somewhere up through there, he talks about offending a little one, but then he goes right on to all offenses. And then look in verse number 5. <coughs> when Jesus says that you're going to have to forgive him, and then the, 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 he says back, Whoa, Lord, you're going to have to increase our faith on that one. He says in verse number 5, and the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. So this was not an easy task. This was not something simple. This was not something easily done. And so the apostles, when he said, whoo, Lord, you've given us a tough one here. You mean again and again and again and again and again I'm going to have to forgive them? Lord, if we're going to do that, you're going to have to give us more faith than what we currently possess. And I want to speak to you about that. And I want you to realize that this offense against us, if we're going to combat it in the right way, we're going to need faith in the good Lord. Otherwise, you'll be handling the offense. Otherwise, you'll be taking care of God's business and you'll be leveling out people when it's supposed to be God that does it. Because basically, what we understand about faith, the Bible says it's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So what happens is if somebody offends me, I haven't seen the fixing of it yet. I haven't seen it reconciled. I haven't seen it brought to judgment. I haven't seen it fixed or made right yet. And so if I'm going to trust the Lord and forgive this person that's standing right in front of me, sometimes as I've said before, you say, Lord, you don't have to worry about this. When I got him, I'll take care of him. But what I, if I'm going to forgive that person, I'm going to forgive them only in faith. That whatever they've done, God can take care of. And I'm speaking from the least of offenses to the greatest. If you're going to have peace in your life, you're going to have to ask God for the faith to forgive the person who offended you. 
And that's, my friend, why the apostle says, Lord, if we're going to do that, we're going to need a lot more faith than what I currently have. And you and I may be in that same boat that we may need to say to the Lord, Lord, we're going to need more faith than we have right now. You're going to have to com- increase our faith. I told you you're going to have to have faith to forgive. Can I give you three practical reasons? If you're taking notes, I give you these. Of why you're going to have to forgive them, or maybe I could say you're going to have to release them. You're going to have to let it go. You say, but you don't know what they've done. I'm not disputing what they've done is grave and gross and and horrible. But what I am saying is, you're not the writer of the wrong. And so you're going to have to release it and let God do it. Or else you're going to rob yourself of health. Rob yourself of peace. Rob yourself of joy. Because you're going to be engaging in the job that's reserved for God. Let me give you these three things. Number one, I release them or forgive them because I can't right their wrong. I can't right the wrong that they did to me or my family or my church or my marriage or my school or my whoever. I can't right the wrong that they did. What did your mom tell you in elementary school? Well, buddy, you can't control what they do. Teachers and moms give some of the best advice. It'd be a wonderful thing if we'd start following it, the advice we got in kindergarten. You can't control what they do. All you can do is control how you respond. Isn't that pretty good advice for us adults? It's not, we don't follow it, but isn't it great? You're going to have to forgive them or release them because you can't right that wrong. You didn't do the wrong. So you're holding a grudge won't change it. You didn't initiate the offense, so you can't go back and make it right. All you can do is on your side say, I'm giving it to the Lord. Number two, not only do you release them or forgive them because you can't right the wrong. Number two, I got to forgive them. I got to release them because I can't forgive their sin. Remember that what they did, if they offended you, if they did something that was wrong, it was, did something that was a sin, all sin is against the Lord. And I can't forgive sin or deal with it, but here's how some of us act. Some of us act as if we're the justice protectors. If I don't voice this cause, who else is going to? That's why I keep going around in my family every time we get a, a family reunion or a family gathering and tell them, well, you, you know what they did 10 years ago. Well, I know I haven't forgotten it. We act as if we're the justice protectors. We've got to make sure those embers keep stirred. We've got to make sure that fire keeps burning. We've got to make sure that our cause, that injustice that was done some time ago, it stays on the prevalent front page. And so we act as if the, we're the justice protectors and we'll, somebody might forget if I don't tell them again and again and again what so-and-so did. But can I remind you what the Bible says? Scripture says, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. God's got it all worked out. And it may be that your vantage point is just a little bit skewed. You might not dish out the right repayment even if you were put in the position to do it. So I say you release them because you can't forgive sin. And let me give you this last one. Not only can't, I can't write their wrong, but I can't forgive their sin. But if I don't release them or I do forgive them or release them because I'm affected if I don't. I forgive them or release them because I'm the one affected if I don't let it go. My pastor says that bitterness against somebody, when you have it, is like drinking Drano and hope that it really ruins somebody's life over there. I'm taking in this, hoping that they really feel it. The Bible says, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you. So what do we do? We get mad. We, get, we deprive ourselves. We start doing all these things to mistreat ourselves, hoping that that gets back at that person that mistreated me. 
can I just tell you this, that oftentimes that person that mistreated you, they don't even, they're not even aware that you're depriving yourself trying to teach them a lesson. If they were that rude to do it to begin with, they were that away, far away from where they were supposed to be to begin with, and they still are, they're probably certainly not going to care about your little antics that's going to try to get them right. I'm saying that I've got to forgive them and release them because I'm the one that's affected. If I don't, my pastor, uh, or a pastor, not mine, but a pastor told a story of, of somebody that he was dealing with in the church, and he knew that they were bitter about some issue, and that the, finally the lady looked at with clenched teeth and said, I'm not bitter. <laughs> How many of you understand you're not making your cause very convincing? I believe, as I said at the beginning, that this thing of unforgiveness, maybe it's an ex that you've got. Maybe it's a child that's turned against your whole family. Maybe it's somebody at work that took you out of the running for some promotion that you were deserving of. I don't, I don't know, fill in the blank. I, don't have, I have no agenda. I have no, I'm not looking at anybody. But I do know if we walk around with unforgiveness, I do know the one that it hurts. The one that it hurts is the one holding it. Maybe you're doing a good enough job that you're letting that person know that you're mad. And maybe it is working on the other side to some degree. I don't know, but I know it's affecting you. And I believe that that's why the Scripture says that the apostles said, Lord, increase our faith. This is a tough one. You're going to have to help us, Lord. Forgiveness. When we forgive... We are following God's example. Because the greatest illustration I can give is, all of us, the Bible says, were sinners. All of us, the Bible says, had turned our back on the Lord. All of us have sinned against Him. And the lovely Lord Jesus left heaven's glory and came and lived 33 years on this earth and then went to an old rugged cross to die on the cross be beaten to a bloody pulp and then be buried and rise again from the dead. All of that so He could forgive some people who weren't worthy. So perhaps you're here today and you are not sure that God's you've ever been forgiven for your sins. The greatest example of forgiveness is that Jesus Christ, the holy, lovely, sinless Son of God, died on the cross to forgive us, unworthy as we were, forgive us of our sins. If you're here today and you've never received Christ as your Savior, He wants to forgive you. He wants to save you. He wants to give you peace in your life. All of which we don't deserve. But He wants to do it for you. He wants to forgive. And so that's why I say that the best way that we can be like our Heavenly Father is to forgive somebody when they don't deserve it. I'm not arguing with you that what they did was wrong. I'm not arguing with that you were right. I'm saying that you're ruining your health, you're ruining your peace, you're ruining your joy when you hold on to it. And you simply need to give it to God. Amen. Would you bow your heads together with me? Father, I pray that you would help us be forgivers. I pray to your Lord, as the Scripture says, you'd give us the faith to forgive. Lord, I pray that you'd increase our faith. I pray that we would be those that would forgive those that have trespassed against us. I pray if there's somebody unsaved, I pray that today you'd come to faith in Jesus Christ. And my Christian friend, if you've been 
why don't you check it out, see if you've been harboring something. You don't need to tell me, but I do advise you to tell the Lord and ask Him to forgive you. And tell Him you're granting forgiveness and you're releasing that thing that was done against you. Lord, you can take care of all that. May we have a time that we truly give it to the Lord for His sake and for your health, for your peace. Well, thank you, Lord, for what you do in Jesus' name. Would you stand together as the instruments play? If God's speaking to your heart, I invite you to come. Maybe you're here and you just need to come pray at an old-fashioned altar. Need to give something to the Lord. Friend, you've carried it around way too long. Just give it away. Give it to Him. What has our Savior forgiven us for? And we can't forgive somebody on this earth for doing something far less than what we did against the God of heaven? This altar is open for you. We're not pressed for time. Would you step out and come? You say, preacher, I don't need to come to the altar. And you don't. I know that. But some of the best decisions I've ever made have been at an altar. As they continue to play, would you pray? And now if there's somebody here, one person or several, you're not sure that you're saved. Forgiveness is what Jesus Christ offers. Forgiveness of your sins. Forgiveness of your debt that you owe. Would you come and let somebody take a Bible and show you how you could accept Jesus Christ as a forgiver of your sins and wants to give you a home in heaven. Perhaps you're here and you've have some other spiritual need. We're going to baptize some in a bit, and maybe you're here today. You hadn't planned on it, but you're saved, and you've been, you bet you've never been baptized after you got saved. You're an adult, and you'd like to come, or your child and your parents are here. We could do it today. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Was ask nothing if thou believest with all thine heart. You'd like to come and be baptized to follow Jesus Christ in obedience. Would you step out and come? Maybe you'd like to join Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church. Brother Daniel's right here in front of the pulpit. You'd like to come present yourself. Then what we'd do is just set up a time this week. We'd meet with you. See if you had any questions. Clear up any, any unclear uh, things that weren't clear. The altar's open for you. Would you come? play through another verse or two and just continue to pray and if the Lord is working on your heart you may have thought of something that you have yet to deal with some grievance or maybe you thought of something that you did to someone else and it's as far as you know never been resolved between the two of you you know, it can start from your side if you're on the on that end of it. And heal that hurt. Pastor said at the beginning of his message, one of the things holding more Christians back than anything else in the world is unforgiveness. You don't want to be the roadblock in someone else's growth either. There's 
so many angles to think about when you think about offenses. But all the sweet fellowship we can have if we clear the, clear the way and let God work fully in our hearts as he would love to do. Father, thank you so much for a wonderful message this morning. Thank you for the truth of forgiveness. Lord, the one's about to get baptized, this one speaking into this microphone right now, and most of, uh, of those in this room this morning have experienced the cleansing truth of forgiveness from you to us, and we rejoice in it. And Lord, I pray that we would live that way interpersonally in our lives, and Lord, that we would learn to deal with these things as you would have us to do. Lord, thank you for what you're doing in our church. I pray you'd bless the remainder of the service. Lord, I pray you'd bless the things going on afterwards as well. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Well, we're privileged this morning to be able to baptize the couple from our Spanish ministry. We have Jeremiah uh, Marias and, uh, and his sister Evelyn will be getting baptized this morning. They have trusted Christ as their Savior and uh, wanted to obey the Lord in believer's baptism. So if you'll indulge me this morning, I'll say that in Spanish. You know, you know the words I'll be saying, so I'll not need to translate. En obediencia a nuestro Señor y Salvador Jesucristo, y porque ha puesto su fe en Él, yo le bautizo, mi hermano, en el nombre del Padre, y del Hijo, y del Espíritu Santo, enterrado con Él en muerte, y resucitado para andar en novedad de vida. Congratulations. Amen. And this is Evelyn Marias. She's professed salvation and placed her faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And now will follow the Lord in believer's baptism. Porque ha puesto su fe en él. Yo le bautizo mi hermana en el nombre del Padre y del Hijo del Espíritu Santo. Enterrado con él en muerte. Resucitado para andar en novedad de vida. Felicidades. Congratulations. Let's go this way. Let's go this way. While they get the others, as Pastor gets down in there, um, just a couple of things as you go. Uh, one is that uh, the... Um <laughs> just one step. <laughs> oh, man. So, you ready? Ready. Right. Well, it's a joy. <laughs> I was afraid Daniel was going to go on and on too long, so... It's a joy to have um, Cameron and Jackson Simmons. Their parents are a great blessing. And, of course, this is um, Rick Hall's grandsons as well. And um, they're going to also join the church. Their parents are already members. And they'll join by baptism. And it's a wonderful thing to see young people come to the point in their life and say, I need to follow Christ in baptism. And uh, what a joy to see those that just got baptized and these fine young men that uh, they want their life to count for Christ because really that's why you get baptized, to follow obedience, follow in obedience to Jesus Christ. And so it's a joy. Cameron, come on down. This is Cameron Simmons. He's trusted Christ as Savior. It's my joy to get to baptize him today. Cameron, in obedience to Jesus Christ, and because you've professed your faith in him, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Hold your nose. Buried in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life. You can stand right there and watch your brother if you want. Come on down, Jackson. This is his big brother, Jackson, and he's also trusted Christ as Savior. It's a joy to get to see him be baptized. Jackson, obedience to Jesus, and because of your profession of faith, it's personal inside, and now it gets to be public as it's done outside. So we do because Jesus Christ commanded us. Buried in baptism. Raised to walk in newness of life. God bless you. Well, it's a joy to get to see folks follow Christ in baptism. And as Jackson and Cameron will join the church with their parents by baptism, we thank the Lord for that as well. And I want to thank each of you for being here. Brother Daniel. Sorry. Cassandra, come on down. 
This is one of the most exciting things to do, to see people follow Christ. And sometimes they get caught up. And uh, why don't you see this way so they can see you. And um, Cassandra, of course, Brother Lynn's granddaughter and Miss Bonnie, and uh, has gone through many health concerns and seen the Lord answer many, many prayers. And she came to Amy and I not long ago and said, well, I want to follow Christ in baptism. It's a joy to see somebody, even through, even through difficulties and stations of life that they didn't choose to be in, they still want to say, I want to serve Jesus Christ, and I want to take my stand for Him. Amen. Cassandra, in obedience to Jesus, and because of your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Married in baptism, <laughs> raised to walk in newness of life. It's certainly a wonderful day for Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church to get to see people not only that have trusted Christ, but then to make it public in front of everybody here. And uh, may we encourage these folks, may we pray for them, may we love on them, and uh, what, just, just think of the joy it is to get to be here today to see people follow Christ in baptism. My heart is overwhelmed. So, we have anything else except for… All right, Brother Daniel, you take it from here. God bless. As you go, if you uh, have some kids in nursery or the junior church, uh, just and you might already be aware of this, especially for the nursery, but due to some renovation and things, the locations have changed for those rooms, and uh, so wanted you to not forget that or to be uh, to know that. And so nursery is over in the Family Life Center, where you would have dropped them off, uh, is uh, where they'll be. But just a reminder, you can cut across the parking lot, unless it's raining, you don't have to or anything, uh, but that is a, a shorter way over there. And uh, so you can make your way across over there and pick the, uh, your children up there. And then Junior Church, that is for third through fifth grade, is in the Berean classroom or the blue room that is just down the hall on the right. And uh, so you can make your way and pick the, those Junior Church age kids up there. And the Primary Church is still upstairs as it would uh, have been last week. But those locations changed for this week. And we're doing a lot of work. The nursery is looking a lot better down the hall. And we're excited about what God's doing down there. And so thank you for uh, shifting around. It's always hard when you've got to take them somewhere else. And so thank you for bearing with us as uh, we try to get that packed in as much as we can uh, with regards to that. But Brother Bobby's going to come and uh, make a quick announcement and then he's going to pray and we'll be dismissed for the day. But if you came for that meet and greet, don't forget, make your way over across the way and you can enjoy that uh, here in just a few minutes. In your bulletin this morning was the sign up card for the harvest party. So please, if you have that opportunity to join us, it is three hours of just direct interaction with a lot, a lot of kids, a lot of folks in our community. Um, it moves fast, it moves fun, and it is a major impact. The other thing that we have asked you to do is to bring us some candy, but as you bring candy, please remember, no peanut butter, no peanuts in that candy because we don't know who may show up with some allergies and we want to be able to hand that candy out with, uh, with no concerns there. So we appreciate you. We look forward to the 22nd. The, the place to drop the cards is on the right as you exit, and we do have some extra cards out there for you to sign up. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. I thank you for this wonderful service that you gave us, Lord. I pray the reminder from Pastor about where our hearts need to be. Lord, I pray that you will bless us as we leave today, and we love you and thank you. In your name I ask it. Amen.